we go. Okay, here we go. We are in DAF. Today's DAF is DAF Kuf Tes 109. And we are starting from the bottom of Kuf Ches Amid Beis. Um, and the Mishnah is dealing with the, uh, the, 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 the Mishnah is on the trend of the Machloikases between Admoin and Chonon. But the Mishnah is dealing with an a interesting case, very interesting case. Uh, it can happen. A man got engaged to a girl, and uh, a man got engaged to a girl. And what prompted him to get engaged to his girl is because his father-in-law said, I'm going to give you X amount of money as a dowry. Okay. So he agreed that they married, get engaged to my daughter and, and I'm going to come up with the money. What happened? The, the, he stuck his foot out. In other words, Rashi says, uh, it's almost like he said, uh, I'm not giving, I'm not, I'm not making do good on my commitments. Kiss the, take the dirt off my feet. Uh, try to force me into something. I fooled you into getting engaged to my daughter. So what do you do in such a case? The guy's stuck. Now he's, he's he, he thought he was getting a big dowry, and now he's, he's nothing. His, his, his father-in-law fooled him. So what do you think the Mishnah would say? So fascinating thing is the Mishnah says, the Mishnah, according to the Tanakama, would say, we go to the top of Kuf Tesum and Aleph, Teshev, Wow. You say you don't have to go through with the marriage. Let her be engaged to you. You don't have to give her a get. And let her be an aguna. Let the daughter be an aguna. You got uh, fooled into such a situation. You could let her be an aguna. Fascinating. But comes along Admin. And Admin, the Tana, whose name is Admin, he said, she could say, if I was the one that came up with this idea. That means I was the one that made the commitment to give money. If I was the well, if I was the one that gave commitment, oh, here's Lewis. So I'm just gonna just repeat the case. Hello, hi, Lewis. Hi, we just began. Hi, we just began. So I'm just gonna. I, I, I get it. I'm just, just going to repeat the case of the Mishnah. Uh, the Mishnah said that a guy got engaged to a girl, and his father-in-law said, get engaged to my daughter, and I promise you a dowry of X amount of money. And then what happened was uh, the father-in-law uh, stuck out his foot. In other words, he, he didn't come through with his promise to, to, to give the dowry. So now uh, the question is, this guy's stuck. He's engaged to this girl. And his, he was, he was uh, I would say, fooled into this because his father will pretend that he had a lot of money and, and fooled him into this engagement. And, uh, and now, he, now he's not coming through with the money. So the Tanakama holds, Teshiv al Talban Roy Shah. That means that you can let the girl be an aguna. Don't, go, don't, get, don't marry her until the father comes up with the money. And if he doesn't come up with the money, don't divorce her either. Let her be an aguna. She'll never get married. Very fascinating opinion. But Admin Oimer, Admin said, what do you blame the daughter? What do you blame the girl? She can say, if I was the one that came up with this, if I was the one that made the commitment, then I agree, make me an aguna. But but now, my father was the one that made the commitment. What should I do? Uh, so I can either marry me or Petoro, give me a get, but don't let me be an Aguna. That's what she could say. What Rutanakama probably will say, but she may have been in on this whole game. She was there when her father father committed this uh committed to give such a huge amount of money. So maybe she's in on the game. So that's why the Tanakama will hold. No, let her be an Aguna, right? Amar Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Gamliel says, Royani is divri admin. I agree with Admin's opinion. That no, we don't allow this person to mix another girl an aguna. We tell them either you marry this girl without the dowry money that you were promised, or give her a get. So the Gemara, Masnisan Loy Kahitana, our Mishnah's version of the Machlaikis between Admoin and the Tanakama is not like this version of this Tana the Brisa. The Tanya we learned in the Brisa. Brisa has a different version of the Machlaikis. Amar Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yehuda said, There's no argument between Admin and the Chachamim. That means, If a guy committed money for his son-in-law, 
and then didn't follow through with the commitment. She can say, don't, you can't make me an aguna. Everybody agrees with that. It was my father that made the commitment. What can I do? I'm a young girl. What am I? My father made the commitment. He didn't come through with the money. That doesn't give you a right to punish me and make me an aguna. So what is the argument about? She made the commitment. In other words, she claimed that she was uh, she has money in a, in a bank account, a Swiss bank account, and she's going to give him give it to him. Oh, if she made the commitment, and if she doesn't come through with the commitment, then then the chacham say teishiv al talbin roisha. Then she should stay until her head becomes white. In other words, that's the talbin roisha, mean until your head becomes white. It means let her be an aguna. She doesn't come up with the money, and she made a commitment and fooled you into gi- giving her, her an engagement ring, and she's not coming through with the money. Uh, she should stay till her hair becomes white. Admin Oimer, Admin says no. She can say, the reason why I made that commitment was Sha'aba Nois and I I thought my father was going to back me up and, and come through and give it on my behalf. That's why. I'm, I'm just a young girl. I made this commitment that my father would follow through. Now I realize my father is not coming through with my commitment. What should I do? I have nothing what to do. I can ice, I petar. Either marry me, I petar, or give me a divorce. But don't have you have no right to make me an aguna. Omar Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Gamliel said, I agree with Admin. You can't make a girl an aguna, even if she was the one that made the commitment. We can she can always excuse herself that she reason why she made this false commitment is, is because she thought her father would back her up. Tana, we learned in Ebrisa, Bamed Ruz, when we say that you follow that that there's a machlaikis, big If it's an, a girl who is over bas mitzvah who makes this commitment. Avo, but big tana, if she's under bas mitzvah, so then we say kaifin. We force something. Uh, hi. Hi. Just and we're talking about somebody who made a commitment. Uh, a, a girl who made a commitment that uh, after you know that she she committed that she's going to give money if the guy gets engaged gets engaged to her, and then she didn't follow through with the commitment. So there is an interesting opinion here, according to the Chacham, that you could make her an aguna. If she doesn't follow, come up with the money, and she made the commitment, then you can make her an aguna. But Admin said no, you can't say make her an aguna until she comes up with the money. You, uh, Adnan said that she could say, I thought my father will back me and, 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 and make good on my commitment. Now that he's, now that he's here, now that he's not here, what can I do? You can't just leave me hanging. You can't leave me hanging, uh, and not make the, uh, and not, uh, and, and can't just leave me hanging. Either you marry me or Petar or give me a divorce. So we learned in a Bryce, a ton up. It's Kuftesa Madal in the middle of the page. Big dialogue. Only if there was a, an adult girl who committed that kind of money for the marriage. Then there is a machlaikis. Avo Bektana, but if she was under bas mitzvah and she opened her big mouth and said, get engaged to me and I'm going to give you money, kaifin, we force something. So the Gemara says, kaifin laman. Who do we force? Ile melav. You force the father to make do good on her daughter's commitment. That doesn't make sense. The opposite makes more sense. How could you force the father to make do on, on his uh, young daughter's commitment? She's under bas mitzvah. Her commitment should be valueless. Hello, the rather the opposite is meant. Oma Rava, Rava said, We forced the husband to give a get. If he, he, you cannot say, I cannot say, I relied on this girl uh, to get engaged because it's if it's a katana making the commitment, yeah, you can't. Uh, that's 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 a, it's an error on the husband, and therefore he has no right to force the lady to come up with the money, or remain in aguna. So therefore, we force the husband to give a get. Nugamara, Amar Rabbi Yitzchak ben Elazar, Mishmei de Chizkia. Rabbi Yitzchak ben Elazar said in the name of Chizkia, Kol Mokam Sheomar Rabbi Gamliel. Whenever you see in the Mishnah, Roya Ni is Divrei Admon. Rabbi Gamliel says, I agree with whatever Admon said. This is a Tana called Admon. You find him somewhere, not only in this Masechta, maybe in other Masechta, this Admoin. Halacha Kamoise. The Halacha will be like him. So then, 
that we paskin like Rabbi Gamliel. When Hebrew he says, I agree with Adman, we paskin like Adman. Even if you find the Brisa, if the Brisa says, Rabbi Gamliel said, I agree with Adman, would you paskin like Adman? So Rav Nachman answered, Mi kamrim Mishnah. Was I specific in saying you that this rule only applies by Mishnayis? Whenever find a place that Rabbi Gamliel agreed with Admin, we paskin like Admin. Okay, so that's the case in our Mishnah. When a, when a father made a commitment, when a father made a commitment on behalf of his daughter that he's giving X amount of money and then doesn't come up with the money, so the Chachamim say, okay, if he doesn't come up with the money and he got engaged to this girl, let the girl turn white. He's not. He shouldn't go through with the marriage and he should not give her a get. Let her become an aguna. And Admin said, no, you can't blame the girl. It was the father who made the commitment. Why should she get punished? And Rabbi Gamliel said in our Mishnah that I agree with Admin. So therefore, Rabbi Nachman gave you the rule that we pass him like Rabbi, 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 like Admon. Amar Rabbi Zera, Amar Rabbi Baba Yirmiya, Beis Devarim Shama Chanan, Halacha Kamoisi. The two things that Chanan said, Halacha is like him. Shiva Devarim Shama Amber ain't Halacha Kiyotz Behem. The Halacha is like Chanan in the two things in this Mishnah. Is. This parak is two things that Chanan said and seven things that Admon said. So the Mishnah, it seems. Rabbi Rab Yirmiya, Rab, Rab Zera made a cryptic statement. So the Gemara says, "My comma, what is Rab, Rab Zera, What is Rab Zera saying? Would you want to say this is what he meant to say? The two things that are found in this parak that Chanan said, the halacha is like Chanan, the boy, and if it's a similar case, we pass Chanan. The shiva Shoma Admin in the seventh and said, I can, right? So then, so then the question is, um, but then the Lazar in the name of Chiski says, didn't Rabbi Yitzchak say we always paskin like Rabbi Gam, we always paskin like Admin if Rabbi Gamliel agreed to him? So how can you say that all seven Mishnayis in this parak where it says Admin we don't paskin like Admin? That doesn't make sense. This is what is meant to be saying. The two things that Chanan said, Halacha That's first. Uh, that's agreed. We always pass in like what Chanan said. That's the beginning of the parak. And anything similar to that. But the seven cases that Admin was talking, those seven cases, we don't pass in if it's a similar case. It has to be an exact case. So Gemara says, But if it's the exact case, we always pass in like Admin. But that's not. that's also not true. Whenever Rabbi Gamliel agreed with Admin, that's when we paskin. Omar in, if Rabbi Gamliel said, I paskin like Admin, I like what Admin said, then we paskin like Admin. Loy Omar, if Rabbi Gamliel did not agree with Admin, loy. And four of the Mishnayas that are in this parak, Rabbi Gamliel did not agree with Admin. It's only three. So what is what what did Rab Zera mean? And let's uh, let's de decipher the the cryptic statement of Rab Zera. So the Gemara gives the final case of Rab Zera, and it makes perfect sense. Alahachi common. This is what Rab Zera meant to say. Shnei devarim she'am achanan. Whatever two things Chanan said, halacha koy moisev eki yitzibai. The halacha is like him and similar to him. Shiva devarim she'am admin. The seven things that Admin said. So sometimes you pass in like Admin, the Kiyotsuboy, and similar. So sometimes you don't pass in like Admin, the Loy Kiyotsuboy, not similar to him. That's what it should be. The Loy Kiyotsuboy. You don't pass in like him. By four of the items, we don't pass in like Admin. Three, we do. What's the rule? Whenever you find in the Mishnai, the Rabbi Gamliel said, I agree with Admin. Then the Allah is like him. That's the first three cases uh, uh, where we pass in like Admin. In a, but the rest of the parak where Rab Gamliel doesn't say, I agree with Admin, Loy, we will not pass in like Admin. Okay. So this is a very interesting Mish Mishnah, which, which came up before. I mean, uh, which comes up often where uh, uh, it happens that a father 
a, a potential father-in-law commits to his son-in-law a certain amount of money and doesn't follow through. And uh, the Rama and every guggle that you you'll find if you do ba- background in the history, it's almost like a theme that they got engaged to a wealthy girl and then the the father-in-law didn't come through, lost all his money, and the, and they and they you know didn't lose their faith and they became a guggle. The Chafetz Chaim, I think, it was was someone similar like that. So that's an uh, interesting Mishnah. The, Mish- the, the Ramah writes that the person shouldn't make a big deal if his father-in-law didn't come up with the money. It's not his father-in-law's money. Abishta gives the money and, and, and go on with the marriage. Zuk the Mishnah. Mishnah says, Ha'ira al oleha be'ed. A guy says to somebody, I'm going to show you a picture. A guy says to somebody, the field that you're on was stolen. It was stolen. Really belongs to me. And and uh, and the guy the guy said, "What do you mean it belonged to you? I just bought it off somebody else, and you signed on it on that star, validating that I'm buying it from somebody else. So you agreed that this this field belonged to somebody else. What are you telling me that this was your field? Let's see the picture. A guy said to to right over here. He said to Ruben says to Shimon, "That's my field, right? Ruben says to Shimon, "That's my field." Right. And Shimon said, what do you mean? That's your field. You were a witness when I bought it from Levy. You signed a document that I'm buying it from Levy. So how could you say it's your field? If you look at the records go, dating back, Ruven seemed to have a deed saying that this field was his. And all we have is a signed contract that Shimon bought it off Levy. So what do you think you do in that case? Adlin came up with a new idea. He could say, a person could say, the reason why I wanted you to buy it off Levi, he says, I wanted you to buy it off Levi so that, that I can deal with you and sue you because you're a much easier person to sue and to get my field back. And therefore, I agreed that Levi should sell it to you just so that Levi walks out of the picture. And now I'm just having my lawsuit with you. And that's why it's not that I agree that this field ever belonged to Levy. It never belonged to Levy, but I just wanted the transfer to happen so now I can sue you for the field. And therefore, if if the guy brings proof that he was the he was the he he the guy didn't have a chazak on the field, and this original guy who's doing the lawsuit saying it's his field because it was many, many, many years in his family, according to Adman, you would believe it. Said, what it means is he lost his rights. You can't sue anymore. You already signed on a document stating Shimon is buying it off Levy. So you agreed that the field really belonged to Levy. So you lost your rights to sue Shimon for the field. But I saw Shimon, even Adman would agree like this. In this case, if, let's say, right over here, we have uh, the guy said, that's my field. Right over here. Ruben said, it's my field. Levy, he said to Levy, that's my field. But Levy said, you signed on a document when I was selling a different field, a different field. And part of that document said that 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 field borders on a field belonging to me. So it wasn't to really, you have no, really, in this case, there's no excuse. Why would you sign on another document sort of agreeing that this field belongs to me? So therefore, if Ruben goes up to Levy and says, the, the green field that you're on is mine, Levy could say, how could you say it's yours? When I sold the blue field to Shimon, you signed that the blue shield, blue field borders my green field. So how could you say that? So therefore, even Avman would agree, Ibed Esuchusa, he lost his right to sue back for the field. Amar Abaya Abayar said, Loishana was not taught Ella aid. If he signed on the, that, the only way to lose your right to sue is if you sign as a witness, because a witness has to read the contract. And you sign, if you sign in as a witness, sort of like you're agreeing that the green field belongs to Levy. You're agreeing that the field is in Levy's hand, so Ruben can has no right to sue back for the field. Avodayan, but if you're just a judge and you're just looking over uh, documents to see if it's correctly written and that there's uh, and the the Aiden that signed on the star are really real people you didn't lose your right to 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 collect from the field because you're only a dying you didn't read the contract you're just signing that the that the Aiden that signed on that document are real people 
because a Dayan doesn't have to read through the documents. Otherwise, the judges will be busy all day. The Tanur Abchi, Abchi said, Ein ha'edin choysim et al ashtar. Uh, witnesses cannot sign on a shtar, elim kein kara uhu, unless they read it. So if they call you up to be an aide for a ksuba, you have to read through the entire document. Uh, because you're not supposed to sign on a document unless you read through it. But we go to Ahmed Bey's. A Dayan could, could sign on a star even though he didn't read it. So therefore, if a guy signed on that document, even though by derivation you could think that he agreed that the field belongs to Levi, still, he was only a Dayan. Maybe he didn't read through the entire document, so we don't fault him for that, and he did not lose his right to sue. But I saw a similar acher, if he made it as a sign post for another field that he was selling. Again, the case is, like, Levi was selling this blue field to Shimon. And Ruben signed on the document that the blue field borders the green field of Levi. And therefore, by derivation, by signing on that document so that Shimon could buy the field, he's, in effect, saying that this green field really always belonged to Levi. So then he cannot say, that's my field anymore. That's what the Mishnah said. Amar Abaya, loishanu el la'acher. Only if the blue field was being sold to somebody else. Avala Atzba, if he himself is buying back that field, if he himself wanted to buy that blue field, he does not lose his right to sue for the green field. Why? The Omar, he could say, he, the reason why I signed on the document that I agree that the blue field borders your, the green field belonging to you, Levi, because the Omar, he said to himself, the, uh, Ruben said, if I'm not going to do that, I have a and he's not going to sell it to me. If I already say that uh, the green field doesn't belong to him, uh, so he's not going to even sell me the blue field. So I said, for the, for the sake of the document, and for the sake of me buying the blue field, I agree that the green field belongs to you. But then, once I have the blue field, now Ruben wants to sue to get the green field back. So, but what should he have done? What are you going to say? He should have done, he should have notified a friend of his that really I'm signing on this document and I don't agree with everything written in the document. He should have told that to somebody to, to make his case. He says, hey, the reason why I didn't tell anybody that I have problems with the green field because every person has a friend, and therefore, if you're going to have that, there's always going to be... Um, they're always going to be uh, uh, friends, and therefore it's going to, and therefore it's going to get the words going to get out that um, that I, I have a problem with his green field, and he's not going to sell me the blue field. Therefore, uh, Ruvain uh, kept quiet about it till he bought the blue field, and he did not lose his right to collect the green field. Now the Gemara goes into a story of what uh, similar to what happened in the Mishnah. Ahud asori simla acha. A man signed on a document on a field as a, a symbol that it belongs to somebody else. That means, again, the case in the Mishnah, where a man, Ruvain, Ruvain signed on a document that Levi sold this blue field to, Sh to Shimon, and the blue field borders the green field belonging to Levi. After the sale, Ruvain now tells Ru Levi, hey, that green field belongs to me. So the Mishnah says, you lost your right to sue for that field because you sort of agree that the green field belongs to Levi. So the Gemara says, but that person, Erer, he started to complain that the green field belongs to him. Ushchiv, then he died. Va'oikim apitropa. And then he died, and then apitropa, a caretaker, took over for the assignment. And this this apitropa was a fantastic lawyer. Asi apitropis the divide. So the apitropis, this lawyer, came in front of Abaya. Amale, so Abai said, you can't tell me that this green field belongs to the Yisoyman because Asoy Simulacher, their father, signed on a document which agreed that the green field belongs to, to Levi. And Ibn is Husay. And because he signed on that document, he, he, the father himself, lost the right to sue for that field. So the Gemara said, Omar, so uh, the, the lawyer, Apitrope, said, if the father was around, he would have said, you're right, I signed on that field. I signed that, that that field borders, the blue field borders, the green field of Levi, but I only agreed that Pelham Echad I only agreed that one row of this field, let's just make one row, 
One row of the field belongs to Levi. That's what I agreed to. That's what the, the father could have said. I agreed that this one row belongs to, Le belongs to Levi, but the rest still belongs to me. That's what I'm tining. So if the father was around, he can, could have said that. And then we would believe him. The Amr Rabbi Yechen, Rabbi Yechen, Amr Leif. So Abayi said, Shapik Amrit, you're right. The Amr Rabbi Yechen, in Torah, the Amr tell him, Echad Asisilecha, if he's tainis, that one, I agree that one row belongs to you, Naman, he's believed, and he can still sue for the rest of the Siv. Zil Hav Leimia, tell him Echad. So Abayi said, okay, that one row will give to Levi, and you can try to keep the, the other rows. You can keep the rest of the field. So this guy wasn't done. He doesn't want to keep the other, he wants to even get that row back for the assignment. Havale Richba Dikli, there was a bunch of palm trees on that one row. Amale, he, he said like this, that this, this lawyer said, if the father of the orphans was still around, he would have said, I brought back this talent because this row, the only reason why we believe it's Levi is because Reuben said, it's, I agree that this is Levi's. This row is Levi's. But if the whole reason why Levi owns it is because Reuben said it belongs to Levi, and now Reuben, if Reuben Katina, that I brought it back from him. So it's a Pesha also, a Pesha Ita. This whole story is based on what Reuben says. So we would believe it. And, and therefore, this, this lawyer is saying, this is what the father would have said had he been around. Um, so Abai said, Shapik Amrit. You're saying very good. If he tines, it says, I brought it back, this role. I, I, it's true, it belonged to Levi, but now I brought it back for him. Now when we trust him too. So therefore, not only this guy, this Apitropa, got back the whole green field that was in Levi's hand. Uh, he sued back for the field and won. And so he was a fantastic... Baruch, Baruch. Can I ask a question quickly? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> because it, it's it's a little confusing, not, not confusing, disturbing to me that it could, based on he said, she said, in, in a sense that if the father was here, he would have interpreted this way. They only wanted one row and not the whole field. You could, you could, you could basically take that argument and make it for anything as far as some lending and borrowing. For no, no, no. Oh, Sheldon, I, there's one thing that's that that's very important is that this field, when he, when the the, the field that has a deed that said it originally belonged to the dead father. Okay. Now it ended up in this guy's possession, and he has no record of purchase. So there's no okay. record. Okay. So once he, there's no record, it could be he said, she said. Then it becomes he said, she said. But what's right? The so there's, the if there's no record, then you could argue that this is what he meant. That's that's the idea. There's no record at all. That's right. Right. But there's a there's there's an old deed that it originally belonged to that mm -hmm. the guy that's saying it's mine, and this guy right. said right. was on that field. And he has no, Understood. and he wasn't, and he's not a muhsik in the field. Right, right. Understood. Okay. So that's the point. Uh, otherwise, you know, the, uh, we always go after who had the chazak in the field. Who has been living there the right. longest? Mm -hmm. Abayi, Abayi said, hey, mind the If you're going to hire an apitrapa and a lawyer, take this guy. He knows perfectly how well to, to defend the rights of the orphans. New Mishnah. A new case, a very interesting case. A guy goes overseas. He has a field right in the middle. And there are four fields around his field, right? So how is he going to get to his field? He had an easement through one of the fields to get to his field, which is in the center, okay? So, but what happens? He went to another country. And then he comes back years later. He forgot which field was the easement to, uh, that gave him a little path to get to his field, which is in the center. But of the Derek Sadeh, when he lost, which was the road leading to his field? Admin Oymet, Admin says, Yelech Leibik You find the shortest route and you find the shortest uh, path to his field. And that person has to give him that path to his field. So if there's a shortcut with one of those fields, that person has to give him the easement. The Chachamim Oymer says, no, uh, each, uh, he, 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 if the four fields are belonging to four different people, he has to, Yikna Mona, he should either buy a, a, a path to his field in a, an exorbitant price, 
a yifrach ba'aver or fly in a helicopter to land on his field. But he can't uh, he, he can't force and get and say, oh, I had an easement over here, so now it remains. So the Gemara is going to examine what this machlekes is all about. My time at the Rabbanim. What does the Rabbanim say that that he has to now buy a new easement? He always had an easement. So why why the Rabbanim say just because he went away for for uh, for a couple of years now he comes back he lost his easement? Shapi Omar Adman Adman said correctly that he that there's definitely an easement here. Maybe it's not the longest path, but he should should have an easement. Amar Rabbi Huda, Amar Rav, Rabbi Huda, Amar Rav said, "Kegoyin shekifu abar bedei adam abar ruchasal." Four fields, four guys surrounded him from four different sides. So it's each one could say your easement was in the other guy's property. That's what Rabbi Yehuda Amar Rav said, and that's why Rabbanan said you haven't you lost your easement. If you if that's the case, Ihochi my time the Admin. Then why would Admin say otherwise? If there are four different people, and, and each one could say the easement was in the other guy's property. Uh, so, so what's the reason of Abman? Amar Rav so Rav explained. If four people bought while he was in Medina Siam, and there were four people who had fields around him, and four people bought it off him, and that's that's one case. Or four people bought it from one person. Let's say one person before he left the country, one person owned the four properties, but four people now bought all around it. They bought it off that one guy. So now, so then, right now, when he comes back from Medina Sayyam, he has to deal with four people from all north, west, south, east that are uh, that are blocking this to access to his property. So if you're dealing with four people, Kuli Alma Loipligi, nobody would argue the Matsi All those four people could say, What your easement is in my field? The easement is in the other guy's field. It comes from the north or the south or the east or the west. He Pligi, but when is the argument? One guy bought it off four people. So now one guy owns all four fields from north, south, east, west, surrounding the center field in the middle. So then you have a machloikis. Since it belongs to one guy, we know for a fact there was an easement here between these four properties. So therefore, this one guy owns an easement for the guy in the center, for the owner of the field in the center when he comes back. To give him an easement, he doesn't have to give him a lot of space. He can just give him a shortcut to get to his property, which is in the center. For Rabbanon Sav, Rabbanon say, he shot get shot get. If you're quiet and buy what I'm going to tell you, buy. Then then keep quiet. Viloy, if you're not, In other words, if the one guy will say, if you don't take my price, then I'm going to return, I'm going to sell it back to the four people like you originally have, and then it's going to cost you more because each one will be able to push you off to that your easement was somewhere else, and then you won't be able to get any easement at all. Or at all. So you have to pay my price. And the fact is that what, he, what basically I think he's saying is that when the one guy bought it off four people, let's say he came back and there was four people and he lost where his easement is, all four can say your, your easement was somewhere else by the other guy. So when these four people sold it to that one person, he has the right to say the same thing, even though it's not practical because definitely he's the owner of all four sides. But when you buy something, you buy you buy the property plus the, the rights to say what the original owners would say. And therefore he could push the the he could push each one, he could have said that your easement was somewhere else. And therefore, according to the Chachamin, you have to pay his price. He doesn't have to give it to you for free. One more piece, and that's it. Ahud Amalahu, Dick Lilavras. A guy said, I a guy said on his deathbed, one palm tree, give it to my daughter. Okay? Give it to my daughter. Uh, I, you know, the, the boys get the Yerusha, give one palm tree to my daughter. Palm trees were valuable. That was like giving a, a, a apartment building to your daughter. Okay, the, the, the assignment after he died, divided up all the assets and did not give her a palm tree. So Rabbi Yosef says, that is, the, that, that is our Mishnah. Because you're going to go to each Yosem and say, oh, give me the, the palm tree. He's going to say, I didn't take your palm tree. She, the, uh, my brother took your palm tree. So each brother will say, will push her off and say, um, say that uh, that uh, I'm not responsible for giving you your palm tree. 
go 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 to go to the other brother. Amale, Abaya, Abaya said, Midami, you can't compare that case to our Mishnah. In our Mishnah, each one, when four people own the property, each one could say, I only own a fourth. And therefore, your easement was by the other guy. Here, at one time, before the Yerusha, before the brothers split it up, there was definitely a palm tree belonging to this lady, to the girl, to the daughter. So therefore, uh, there's, there's so therefore they can't push her off. They can't. One brother can't push her to the other brother. What should they do? They should start over again. They should restart dividing up the assets. First, give her her palm tree, and then split the rest of the of Yerusha. You can't just cut out the daughter. One more point. A guy on his deathbed said, "I want to give a palm tree to my daughter." Okay. Shachef, he died. Vishavik Dre Palga de Dikle. And he had, he left over two halves of a palm tree. In other words, he had a 50% palm partnership in, in, in two palm trees. Okay? So the question is, can the, the, the Yarshim, the boy, satisfy by giving her, instead of one complete Dikla, one complete uh, uh, palm tree, they give her 50% ownership in two different partnerships, which the father had a had a partner with it. You know, instead of giving her one apartment building, they give her a, a piece of two different apartment buildings. So Yasser Ravashi they call him Kashale. Uh Rav Yassi was dealing with this difficulty. Me, but the father said, I'm giving one palm tree to my daughter. Me Kari and Ashilitre Palga Dikli Dikli. Does a man say call two half of the palm trees as one palm tree or, loy, or not. Maybe the father meant, I'm giving my daughter 100% ownership in one palm tree. You can't get away with giving her half ownership in two different palm trees. Um, so that's Rav Ashi. Um, so Rav Ravashi said to Rav Ashi, that's Hachi Amar Abimi Mahagronya. Abimi from Mahagronya said, Mishmei de Rava, Kare and Asher the trade palm the dickly dickly. Yes, people call two half of palm trees as one palm tree. So yes, the Yarshim can give her ownership in two half palm trees. They don't necessarily have to give her ownership in one palm tree. So this ends Daf Kuf Tes. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay.